you think is not in a position battle entering spring? Your linebackers? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think so. Jordan? Yes, Jordan. Johnny? Um, I was going to say there's aspects of the wide receiver position that are relatively well-defined. Um, Pittman, I think, is probably unchallenged, right? Pittman is. Uh, you're not going to say this, but you didn't go get Fintrell Cypress not to play him. You know, I mean, that's, a, yeah. one, that's one of the top two or three players in the portal. So uh, he's got to come in and work all the stuff. But at the same time, you, you've got that guy to get that guy. Um, I I think Robert Scott. Jared Verse. Probably. Yeah. Byers is... I'm not sure where, but I would be shocked somewhere between surprised and shocked if Byers mm -hmm. is, is not a guaranteed starter at one of your spots. Love it is is a starter for you. I think, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he like, is. I'd, I'd be pretty shocked if, if it was Fisk and Jackson over him. Um, Dent. Yeah, Dent. And Benson. And absent other portal activity, I mean, I think you can say Shaheen Brown's your starter right now, but we'll, we'll see if there's there's more movement in safety. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I know uh, Brennan Sinone uh, said that they're going to try out uh, uh, Duke Cooper as well at safety this spring. So, you know, that, that's, that's interesting. I, okay. I think they have to be smart there about, like, who they approach position changes with and, and win, right, to prevent – transfers you know and we'll see like like who um you know who keeps the roster together the the best and and who doesn't upset the apple cart right like there are certain guys i think could be the best option to move to that safety spot but they may view themselves more as a corner and we'll just watch how that progresses throughout the spring and sometimes position changes work out actually like even if they're trying like the opposite effect where they're trying to essentially uh, not break a guy but just see how much they can test him yeah. and uh that has happened before but I, I asked this question dude because i i think it's notable who we didn't mention right i mean meach washington maurice smith um uh, you know, i think the tight ends are in a position battle depending on on what formations that you're in your your x receiver position right like that's going to be fascinating too i i I think I like Darian Williamson quite a bit, but we'll see who else can emerge on the outside. McClendon was not mentioned, right? And and you know, like I don't think there's any guarantee. Pat Payton not well, guaranteed. Yeah, I mean he and he and Payton, that's gonna be great. Gonna be a lot of fun to watch. And all and, uh, and all it's a South Carolina kid. Yeah, right. And Gilbert Edmonds gonna be right behind him. Uh it'll be a lot of depth there. A lot of yeah. This is kind of fascinating, man. It's great. I mean, it's when your point's exactly it. The the names that you can have here and not have them be automatic starters is where this really starts to get fun. And it makes you realize the amount of progress that's been made over the last 18 months or so of turning this roster and then holding on to enough of it uh, after this year to to live the big dream of, of what 23 could look like. So uh, I, I wanted to bring up a, a baseball analogy for you. And baseball season kicking off. I got my Rays hat on. Really excited to go. I, my, my son's talking about Wander Franco. He wants to watch Wander Franco highlights on YouTube. And yeah, you know, I'm excited about some of the stuff coming up with the baseball season with, with the new pitch clock. And hopefully that'll keep stuff moving uh, pretty well. There's a, a fascinating article, by the way, by Grant Brisby, uh, who went and he watched exact games in terms of runs, hits, errors, walks, and same final score from uh, 2020 compared to, or not maybe 2019 because it was not a COVID year, compared to one in like 1989. So 20 year difference here, or 30 year difference, excuse me. And uh, and one was like an hour longer. Hmm. And he's like, where is the major difference coming from? And he charted it. And actually, the vast majority of wasted time or expanded time was time between pitches. So it was not more commercial breaks. It was not more pitching changes because he, he also counted for that. Like same number mm -hmm. of pitchers used everything like and it, it's you, you can kind of do that. It was really interesting. Uh, but 
I'm I'm curious here, you know, what, what that would look like. But the reason I bring up baseball here, this is a long transition and I apologize, is that I was reading an article and I can't remember who wrote this, but it, it talked about, you know, you have your, your teams that, that have a lot of upside guys. And then you also, the teams that had the fewest number of innings played by guys with negative war. So negative wins above replacement. And it turns out that some of the teams that rated really highly in the standings were teams, not that had superstars, but that minimized their innings played by guys with negative war. And like the Brewers had very few superstars last year, but they also, I think, had the fewest number of innings played by guys who have negative war. And, and I, I look at this and I, I can, then you can analogize this roster a little bit to what the Brewers are doing, right? I don't see a lot, a lot of top 100 picks or certainly not a lot of first rounders on this roster right now. But I also don't see a lot of positions on this roster, especially not starters, that I feel like are going to be uh, like the default starter and also not a good player, right? Every position battle that's unsettled, I, I, I think you have relatively high floor. And I think that's a credit to what Battles In has done, right? Of, of making Florida State a place that you know you can have some quality NIL opportunities uh, to market yourself. And that makes, you know, obviously attractive uh, place to be. I, I mean, don't you feel really good about the floor of all these positions, if not the ceiling? Absolutely. I mean, and I think you're, you nailed it there. I mean, the guys that you're going to have playing next year, uh, to use a, a soccer analogy, or guys that are going to give you a bunch of seven and a half, eights, eight and a halfs. You know, I don't know that you're going to have a whole lot of tens. You certainly got guys who have that ability. If you, the more you talk to people around the program, the more they'll tell you that like Trey Benson may just be like scratching the surface of what ultimately he can be. Like, so okay, okay, so so maybe maybe you have the best running back in the country or something like that. Maybe Jordan continues on his. Um, his path. So you've got a couple guys out there that can give you nines, nine and a halfs and tens, but I think you're just going to get, you know, seven and a halfs and eights from, from damn near everybody uh, as to what it looks like. So uh, yeah, the battles in, <clears throat> we have uh, public availability today. You can go to the battles in.com. Look at our website. We have five different membership levels there and all sorts of other opportunities. The um, there's, there aren't a whole lot of limitations <laughs> in this space, man. You can do, uh, almost anything is uh, is possible, and uh, we're real excited about what we've been able to accomplish in the first 80 days and very proud of the role that we've been able to to have in the retention of the roster that we're talking about here now. And, again, if it's something that uh, that you, the NOLCast listener, want to be involved in, uh, please feel free to, to do so in whatever way you may feel is appropriate or to reach out to me if I can give you more information about the battles. 